Hello, my name's Terry Doe. I'm the editor of Airgun World. And one of the best parts of my job is testing air guns. Today, I'm testing an old favourite. This is the Air Arms S510 Superlight Carbine. Now, this isn't a new gun by any means, but Air Arms run a policy of rolling development where they upgrade and they give little tweaks to the engineering, to the stock, whatever. As a tester and as a field tester for Air Arms, it's my job to take it out in the field and to see how all these upgrades work. Before I do that, I'd like to take you through the features of the rifle. Now, the first thing you notice when you look at any rifle straight out of the box, you get a feel for, for how it looks. And don't believe the butch hunter types who say, I don't care what it look, look, looks like, I only wanna shoot it, I'm only interested in performance. That's a complete lie. We all like to shoot guns that look pretty. It's a fact. Now this is a good looking gun. It's classically styled, nothing outrageous about it. What is really clever is that ambidextrous stock. The mark of a good ambidextrous stock design is that it doesn't look or feel ambidextrous. There's no real big compromise. And there isn't with this. This is a very well balanced stock, very well made, gives you all the control you need. There are one or two things I'd like to see added to it, but that's my preference. I would prefer an adjustable butt pad, as always, and I would like a thumb scoop at the back to give me more control over the stock and the trigger. But otherwise, I really like this piece of woodwork here, and it's got some great features in the action it holds. We've got a fully shrouded barrel. It's threaded for a silencer. I don't think it needs it, some will. In an ultra quiet situation, they'll want to put an extra silencer on it, and they can. It's got one of the best fast fire systems going. This is side lever, loading and cocking, simple magazine system, removable rotary mag, just drop the pellets in. It's manually indexed by a little lifting device inside the action. It's got an excellent trigger, two stage adjustable. It's got an in trigger safety button. The only thing I don't like about it is the visible spring that gives it the tension. To me, it looks a bit like something out of a biro. I don't like the look of it. That's all. It works perfectly well. I just don't like the look of it. I don't want to see that spring. Otherwise, mechanically, absolutely superb. It'll give you 90 shots in 2.2 and 70 shots in 177. And just before I carry on, a word about that. 70 shots in 177. If you miss every other shot, which you shouldn't, that gives you 35 rabbits to carry. Take it from someone who's carried 25 in a wonderfully fitted rucksack, that's about 20 too many. So don't worry about running out of shots. People worry too much about that. Scope mounting's dead easy on it. You've got a nice high block, good scope mount. So you've even got an arrester system, although this is a recoilless rifle, of course. That positions the scope perfectly so it doesn't foul the mag. All in all, this is a quality item. It's easy to look after, it's easy to load, a wipe with a rag will see, it, see your maintenance done much as you need it. And as far as accuracy goes, this thing will outshoot everyone I've ever met, including me very much. Now, I've tested previous models. I know how well it shoots. So it's got to at least match that and hopefully be a little bit better. Believe it or not, there are still people who are scared of running an auto load system. Well, here's your antidote. All you need to do is Tip the magazine up, expose the loading port and drop pellets in one by one as you rotate the pellet holding wheel. Wait until it's full up, put the mag back in the rifle and the gun will do everything for you. There really is nothing to worry about. It's as easy as making a cup of tea. Believe it or not, even in this day and age, there are still air gunners put off by pre-charged pneumatics because they're a bit worried about filling them up and loading them. I'll show you just how easy it is to run these things. All you've got to have is common sense. Keep everything clean. Keep these clean. Don't let dirt and grit get in these. If it does, we can get inside the system and mess up the valves. Keep these clean. Take your time when you're filling them. Don't rush. Do not rush. Make sure everything is, is connected securely. Make sure these little fitments all lock in as they should. It's dead easy. Clip it over. That locks it down. Other systems just plug in or they use retractable collars to lock them down. It's dead simple. 
very important point. Make sure your bleed valve's closed, and when you fill your rifle, do it slowly. Get a complete fill, and just, just have the needle creeping along. Take 30 seconds, take a minute. If you take your time, you get a complete fill, and everything's dead easy to do. When it's filled, shut it off. Open the bleed valve. That takes the air from the hose. When all that's gone, disconnect. Again, keep it clean. That'll go in its little pouch. This goes straight back on. And you're ready to go. Dead easy. Now, this looks a fairly easy process. All the support's done for me. All the aiming's virtually done for me. I've got a recoilless rifle that will put pellets pretty much on top of each other at the 35 yards I'm testing. Problem I've got is the wind is belting around now. The targets are in a sheltered corner, which is good when there's a little bit of wind. When there's a lot of wind, that corner then creates a bit of a vortex. And right away, I can see the target card flapping. So if there's enough down there to flap a target card, there'll be enough to mess up the accuracy, but we'll see. Let's put a few in. Okay, she's as zeroed as I can get it in these conditions. If I were using it for hunting or competition work, I'd definitely want another zero session, but the range just starting to come down. I'm ready to go. I like to fire a clearing shot first. So that'll go just down the range to nothing. And now we get on and see if we can shoot a couple of groups. This is all about ultimate accuracy, not handling, not ergonomics, just accuracy potential. Yeah, I'm happy with that one. Wind's kicking up now. And yeah, pushing them to the right a little bit, but staying on the right line. Yeah, wind's fairly steady. I'm getting about three quarters of an inch down there, but I don't mind that, that's consistent. This is the first establishing zero and accuracy session. I can hear in the trees now, we're gonna get soaked any minute now, so we better get the camera gear and stuff away. But this is how we do it. We do the chronoing, we do the accuracy test, we test a variety of pellets, and we just sit here and see what the guns will do. And by the end of the session, I know what the potential is. After that, it's rain, snow or blow, into the woods, over the fields. If I feel confident enough with the rifle, I'll actually go on a live hunt with it. If I don't, I'll sort of simulate a hunt and I'll be shooting at acorns and bits of old rotten fruit or whatever there is out there that I know represent the same sort of accuracy demands as live quarry wood. At the moment, because this is an Air Arms S510 and I've used them many, many times, I know this, if it's functioning properly, will do the job. But I still have to get the most out of it and that's gonna take time and it's gonna take a better day than this. When I look at an S510, I'm looking at something that has nothing to prove. I've shot hundreds, yes, hundreds, head of ermine with this rifle in its various development forms over the years, and I know what it does. It's used by thousands of people all over the world in all sorts of different configurations, and it improves year on year. I think it's still got more mileage in it yet, but no doubt our arm's gonna come up with something in the very near future, and we'll be on the lookout for that. Air Arms are some of the best field consultants in the business and they get to handle stuff before it goes to production and that's how they develop their rifles. That's why the Air Arms range, especially this 510, comes to the shoulder superbly. It's really well balanced. You can point it wherever you can hold a steady aim and it'll help you do what you need to do. This isn't by accident, it isn't by fashion. It's by design, testing, change and development. That's how our Air Arms do it. It's called rolling development, and that is literally how air arms roll. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for the best hunting, air gun, deer and bow hunting videos on YouTube.